Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you're listening around the world. A very warm welcome from London here in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. My name is Martin Lee and this is your EV News Daily for Tuesday the 17th of April 2018. Coming up today we'll talk about solar car dealerships and how quickly do you want to charge your EV. But first of all today the current Model 3 tracker from Tom Randall and Dean Halford is updated yesterday and it shows six 16,587 Model 3 cars produced and a current rate of 2,731 Model 3s being built every single week, edging closer to that 3,000 car mark. And first up, a video recommendation as well. The Fully Charged channel has added a really long YouTube video about the brand new Jaguar I-Pace, getting up close and personal with it. They get to drive the car. The drive that all the other car reviewers did around those cones is on there, plus they got a longer drive of it later and loads of shots as they walk around a static car and talk about a cutaway of the car as well. So you can see the batteries, the motor, uh, the inverter, all the techie bits. It's brilliant. Go check it out. Well, first of all, we're talking about Li Shufu. He is the head of Geely, the chairman of Geely, an electric car super brain and a bit of a visionary as well after making those investments in Volvo and many other things. Plus, of course, a huge domestic maker in China, one of the only non-government-owned electric car makers and happens to be a bazillionaire as well. And he's writing in today's Telegraph newspaper here in the UK. He says that China faces the same issues impacting mature markets such as North America and the West, battling congestion and pollution. And that's why electric cars are the answer. He says that Chinese brands need to think beyond their own borders. And he talks about Geely, which he founded in 1997. Today, China's largest privately owned car group uh, with reshaped businesses at home and expanded overseas. He talks about how at the end of 2017, though, they became the largest shareholder in Volvo and how the future of the internal combustion engine was put in doubt. Of course, Volvo, one of the first car makers to say that all of their future cars will be electrified in some way. He talks about how cities need to embrace electric cars in the future. It is a fascinating insight into someone who is right at the top of one of the biggest EV companies. I will tell you this though, in the article he says this, and I quote, those willing to join hands with each other to forge proprietary digital platforms which will be shared and utilised by their different brands will hold the winning formula as our sector becomes increasingly competitive. Respectful cooperation, recognising mutual independence, offers a new route to navigate this transformation. End quote. And that's a fascinating look into what he thinks is going to be the way forward. Rather than just locking your doors and putting up walls, it's about working with each other as well. And that certainly sounds like a Chinese company that want to sell a lot of cars in North America and Europe as well. Well, moving on to the subject of charging. And everyone wants to do something quickly these days, from fast food to listening to podcasts on double speed fast forward so you can fit in twice as many. Uh, but when it comes to fast charging, it's a double-edged sword. While you want a rapid charge quickly, you don't want to abuse your batteries all of the time. On the whole, however, the faster the better when it comes to rapid charging if you're on a road trip and everyone else will get a little taste very soon of what Tesla owners have had with their supercharging speeds, plus a little bit more actually. 350 kilowatt chargers are starting to be installed in Europe, there's some in Germany already, and sitting somewhere between the existing 50 kilowatt chargers and the 350 kilowatt beasts are there were 175 kilowatt chargers. They're being stalled by Fastnet here in the UK. Now, Clean Energy News reports that Newcastle University is to be home of the UK's first public 175 kilowatt EV chargers under a new project with Fastnet, the Dutch company, who won a tender from the Northeast Combined Authority and the university. Well, the contract will see two new Go Ultra Low fast charging stations constructed at the universities. Uh, each of them are going to offer six. 50 kilowatt chargers plus the latest 175 kilowatt chargers, which, this is interesting, which will be enabled to be upgraded to 350 kilowatts at some point in the future. Well, the 350 kilowatt option was recently unveiled by Fastnet as a result of its partnership with the tech provider ABB, with the first units for them installed in Amsterdam. And that's where the story ends. And that's interesting. It's a whole chicken and egg thing. I mean, do you just make cars that can charge really quickly but frustrate people by not being able to utilize that speed? Or do you put the charging network in despite no cars? being on the road yet, which can do that. However, when the Jaguar I-Pace comes along, 100 kilowatt, when the Porsche Mission E comes along with its 800 volt battery, then the charging infrastructure will start to be ready. 
Like I say, chicken and egg, someone's got to spend some money first, and the charges are being installed before the cars are ready. Well, moving on to dealerships, and most EV buyers can return to the dealer under the umbrella, the manufacturer they bought from, if you like, to charge up their car for free. For example, I could go back to my local Nissan dealer and charge up a Nissan Leaf, normally for free as well. Not always, but it's quite common. Uh, well, now in Japan, Mitsubishi want to take that a step further. Mitsubishi's 28 showrooms throughout Japan will have solar panels installed and the ability to use an EV's battery power as emergency battery source via the vehicle to building technology, V2B. However, the new uh, Hyper Energy stations, which opened this week in Satama City, have also been fitted with their own lithium-ion battery packs to provide backup power for the local grid, says Automotive World. Well, the article continues, featuring lithium-ion batteries of a capacity of 12 kilowatt hour, the building can supply power for recharging EVs in the event of a natural disaster or power outage when normal power supplies are cut off. EVs have played a key role in transporting people and goods in previous emergencies in Japan when conventional fuel supplies have been disrupted. Mitsubishi's already opened 28 of these Dendo Drive stations across Japan, all featuring solar panels and V2B charging. Plans to increase this number to 200 by 2020. That's great news. And anything I, anything I would question in there, in the article, is that those battery packs at the dealerships of 12 kilowatt hours, I mean, they're not huge, are they? I mean, if in the event of a power cut, it, you get a third of your battery charged of a typical EV. EV. Well, moving on, and France broke some sales records last month in March 2018. It's back with a bang after being down the previous month to some new highs, actually. 4,214 EVs were registered in March in France, which is up 41.6% year-on-year. If you count light-duty vans as well, it includes 756 electric vans and 1,187 plug-ins. Now, France does like to keep things domestic, if you like. Strong sales for the Renault Zoe. That led with 2,245 sales last month. That's over half of all EVs sold. As for the new LEAF, it did explode with 719 LEAFs, over a 100% increase year on year. Also up was the BMW i3. That was in third place. The Tesla Model S uh, with 162 new buyers last month in France. And finishing up in fifth place with the, was the ever-elusive Hyundai Ioniq. Would love one, just can't get hold of one. And finally, Lexus are working on a plug-in hybrid, a full BEV and a hydrogen drivetrain all at once for their next generation, their fifth generation, Lexus LS. They say they're all on the table. Now, for a luxury car maker like Lexus, electric refinement makes perfect sense, offering a quiet ride and high performance. However, Lexus do need to keep up with luxury EVs from their main competitors, the likes of BMW and Mercedes, all coming very soon. Autoblog point out the battery electric LS is a big question mark outside of Lexus. Lexus HQ. Last year, Toyota announced a breakthrough in solid-state battery technology, with the car maker announcing it wanted the solid-state batteries on the market by 2022. Now, this technology, as it's brand new and not commercialised, won't be cheap if you're talking solid-state. It makes the LS a good car to launch it, says Autoblog, because of the high price, and to compete with Mercedes electric EQS sedan, slated to arrive in 2020. Well, of course, the EQC, the first Mercedes, is going to be arriving very soon. That's the equipment equivalent of a C-Class Mercedes, which I still think would interest lots of Lexus buyers. And if Lexus are going to go straight to solid-state battery technology, they're going to have to buy, either take some very small margins on profit, even sell them at a loss, or, much like hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, just not sell many of them at all because the price is going to be so, so high compared to lithium-ion batteries by 2022 when you've got half a million Model 3s being made. Add on top of that Model S's, Model X's, half a million VW's of the new ID range being made every single year. Those battery pack prices are going to come down and down and down. Moving on with solid-state technology, okay, you can charge it quickly, but you have to charge it a lot as well because it won't hold the charge. They haven't got the technology just right compared to lithium-ion batteries. It's going to be so expensive as well. Fascinating to watch, though, to see which technology is ultimately going to win. Well, I'd love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can, share this with somebody who might be interested. Listen to every previous episode of the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog, evnewsdaily.com. You can subscribe. It's free, which means you get it first and automatically as well. And if you could take two minutes to rate and review on the platform you download, it would mean a lot, but no worries if you're super busy. Say hi on our socials on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.